Woo, baby. Sometimes I go to the movies And I walk away mad I just wanted to see some boobies And I want to Oh my God, boobies! <laughs> I can watch some creepy, crappy movie reviews. Creepy, crappy movie reviews. I had swipe swipe. No, I fucking no. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the final edition of Creepy's Crappy Movie Reviews for Sweeps Week. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. I enjoyed watching them. I've enjoyed doing them. It's been fun. Um, and this isn't the end for Creepy's Crappy Movie Reviews. We'll be doing more eventually. But uh, I just felt that since I took such a long hiatus from doing any of them for like three months, that I would do fucking five in a row, which is a little bit of an overkill. Um, but to end the reviews, I want to talk about um, a movie that a lot of people have probably never even heard of, let alone seen. But I want to, of course, set it up for you guys. Um, we'll go through the series, the Psycho series, first of all. Everyone knows, and you should love the original Psycho, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's one of his best movies. I don't know about the best, but definitely one of the best horror films in the 1960s. And I have some affection for the sequel. I really love this movie a whole lot. Psycho 2, which came out a good 23 years after the original Psycho. Uh, and a lot of people wanted to hate this movie, but they just couldn't because it was that good. It was that damn good. And um, enjoyed that one as well. Psycho 3 which a lot of people seem to enjoy. I'm not a huge fan of Psycho 3, but it's got some memorable parts to it. Anthony Perkins was director and star of this one. Uh, decent, decent enough, I'll say that. Unfortunately, we sense I could have just done this, but I do have all the Psycho movies on DVD. This is, I'm just gonna talk about this one down here. Psycho 4, which I think is one of the more underrated uh, sequels, uh, which was more of like a prequel, and uh, it was the whole thing, the beginning, you know, you notice a lot of the prequels out there, the subtitle of the movie is, The Beginning, mm, that's the beginning of it, but uh, Mick Garris is definitely my favorite Mick Garris movie, um, Psycho 4, and you get a good glimpse of Olivia Hussey's tits, which is always good, now, up to this point, I really liked the Psycho movies. Then we have, I don't know what the hell I have pressing on this damn DVD, the Psycho remake from Gus Van Sant, uh, which I don't even want to talk about. This is horrible. I don't give a fuck who you are. This is fucking blasphemy right here. Fucking Vince Vaughn stupid ass. I hate Vince Vaughn. But We've all talked about those movies to death, pretty much, especially like the Psycho remake, Psycho 2 and 3. A lot of people don't realize, though, there is another chapter in the Psycho legacy, if you will. This is a made-for-TV film from 1987. That's right, a year after Psycho 3. You already had Psycho 2 and Psycho 3 at this point. Richard Rothstein wrote and directed this movie. Um, if you've never heard the name, there's probably a good reason why I think that this was the only film 
he ever directed and he went on to write the Universal Soldier movies and didn't do much else and this movie though which <laughs> stars Bud Cort one of the goofiest looking motherfuckers I've ever seen is Bates Motel and don't go looking for this movie on Amazon or eBay or anything it's not out this is a DVD or I made the the cover real nice looking because that's how I roll <sighs> so this movie um, first of all was one of the first psycho films I ever saw as a kid. I actually saw the debut of this when it was on uh, network television in 1987. And it was supposed to be a pilot for a TV series called Bates Motel, which, of course, the horrible ratings and reviews never, <laughs> the series never happened. Um, but the story itself completely ignores Psychos 2 and 3. It's as if those never happened. Because Bud Corp plays Alex West in the movie. And he had befriended Norman Bates uh, at the mental home he stayed at up until Norman Bates' death. Yes, in this story, Norman is dead already. And this is before Psycho 4, the beginning. Um, so Norman leaves his good friend Alex the Bates Motel to take care of when he is released from the mental hospital uh, I don't know why the folks at the mental home thought that would be a good idea to leave uh, this crazy son of a bitch the Bates Motel but anyway Alex decides to fix up the Bates Motel and make it a nice bed and breakfast style place where folks can enjoy themselves and have a jolly old time and one of two things happen somebody wants to force Alex out of this prime real estate property or Mrs. Bates ghost has returned and then there's also um, some sort of backstory to this sort of I guess would tell you what the series would have been like um, it follows this lady who is thinking about committing suicide and she uh, sort of befriends this um, group of kids that are staying at the Bates Motel as well on I think it's the opening night where they actually uh, finally open for business and uh, uh, turns out that all those kids are ghosts and they're telling the lady not to kill herself. It's not worth it. I think Jason Bateman is in that. And that really didn't have anything to do with uh, the other parts of the movie. So, <clears throat> anyway, also you have um, uh, Lori Petty is in this. Is like a runaway who helps. Um, she becomes friends with Alex and they help. Uh, uh, she helps them renovate the hotel and all that and uh, the movie was shown once on TV and then like occasionally for years it was on the sci-fi channel uh, you could have checked it out that way and I'll be honest with you I mean the movie has some I, to me in my opinion it has some eerie scenes in it like when you first see Mrs. Voorhees it looks like a zombie Mrs. Voorhees I say Mrs. Voorhees, a zombie Mrs. Bates. <laughs> I've got Friday the 13th on the brain, folks. You see a zombie Mrs. Bates, which is pretty fucked up. Uh, and then, like, I don't know, there's certain scenes the way they shoot the the Bates Motel on the the, the Bates house. Um, it, it's pretty, you know, it's a little spooky. I'll say that. But the movie is is god awful. I mean, it's and the fact that like you had a huge hit with Psycho 2. Psycho 2 made a fuckload of money just four years earlier, and then a year before that you had Psycho 3, and then you have this, which pays no attention to those movies that just came out. You know, 
so I don't, I don't know but this is a nostalgic kick for me um, I actually somewhat enjoyed this movie and if you want to if you want to see it I don't know I mean get it at a convention or something a bootleg dealer uh, because odds are Universal is never going to release this because this is like <laughs> this is sort of like Universal's Star Wars Christmas special or something it's just it's probably never going to see the light of day um, so that's the Bates Motel and yeah I don't know how you could see I mean thankfully a fan of the show sent me a uh, DVD-R of it and I made this nifty cover but uh, I think that there's a VHS release of it that you might be able to track down but it'd probably fetch quite a bit of money so um, anyway that is it for Sweeps Week for Creepy Scrappy Movie Reviews thanks to everybody for checking the the videos out I had a lot of fun doing it this week and um, I will be back sometime next month probably with another edition of Creepy's Crappy Movie Reviews and be sure to stay tuned to the number one rated horror talk radio show in the whole motherfucking land Dead Pills